We are back with the WHL. We are back with Prospect Corner. We are back with Joel Henderson of Puck. Wow, Puck Preps. I'm going to start that one again. <laughs> we are back with the WHL. We are back with Prospect Corner. We are back with Joel Henderson of Puck Preps. Stay on Locked On Blue Jackets. <laughs> Locked On Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, you're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Locked on Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and also YouTube. So make sure you are subscribed over there so you never miss an episode. Today, we have got Joel Henderson of uh, Puck Preps back because he did such a great job talking about prospects last time. So uh, he is back and we're going to be talking about a different member of the Winnipeg Ice today. Uh, We are going to be talking about Matt Savoy whose name trips me up every single time. We talked about this a little bit off mic, but uh, how's it going, Joel? Going really well. Uh, I'm very, very, I I think about the the game of Matt Savoy all the time, so it's nice to be able to talk about it. Yeah. He is a name that I have kind of heard a lot in kind of my pre-prospect research, which is mostly just kind of looking up, I'm like, okay, who's being talked about a lot? And, Mm -hmm. you know, you, you get... Obviously, Shane Wright, and then Brad Lambert, Logan Cooley, and then Matt Savoy. Those are the names that always come up. And so I'm super excited to kind of get into Savoy's game and look at how he might look on the Blue Jackets. So uh, I guess let's let's jump straight in. What kind of player is, is Matt Savoy? What should we expect from him every time he steps on the ice? Well, so, so Matt Savoy was the first overall pick in the WHL draft in his uh, Bantam year. And so him partnered with Connor Geeky, they were the one-two punch that was drafted by the Winnipeg Ice. And Savoy has had an interesting journey. He was trying to get exceptional status into uh, the WHL early on. And then they kind of agreed that he wasn't exceptional, but they would play him a bunch of games. And so he got like a little bit of an extra addition in his his draft year. Uh, And then he got hurt. He got uh, got really like, he got hammered um, and uh, and kind of got hurt for a bit. Uh, COVID hits and he decides to go down and play in the USHL and put up quite a bit of numbers down there. And so a lot of his hype has come from the fact that he's been kind of a scorer at every level he's been at. Uh, And the player that he is, is incredibly smart and incredibly fast. He is a very, very quick player, um, which is awesome because he's not the biggest guy around. And so he negates, um, you know, pressure and he kind of pursues the pucks. Uh, and carries the puck through the zone with incredible amount of speed. He's one of those guys that is so adaptive with his skating stride that he can stop and start and and really, really put pressure on you from all angles. Uh, He's a tremendous forechecker. He's great off the rush, and uh, and he always has his head on a swivel to be able to make a pass um, laterally behind him everywhere. He's just a very, very smart player. So we talked about um, Conor Geeky as an NHL center, whether or not he can be a center at the NHL level. Uh, so I'm going to ask you the same thing about Savoy. Obviously, being smaller, being faster, those are not necessarily kind of things that you think of when you think of NHL centers. So do you think he can, can he make that transition or is he someone that is going to be a very good two-way winger for uh, for a team? I think he's going to be a winger. Um, that's my, that's what I think. Um at the WHL level and at these um, younger levels, the, the biggest thing that, like I said, that he has is his foot speed. And so the way that he's played center um, is, I would say this, most of the things that I'll talk about is that his speed is a, is an incredible asset for him defensively in two ways. I think he's an incredible two-way centerman because anytime that he anticipates the puck where it's going to be going, he closes out lanes and and really makes guys move the puck quickly, takes away lanes from guys, clogs up the lanes, buries them in the corner. He really is one of those guys that he'll beat you to space in all areas of the ice. And so defensively, it's so good because he's aggressive. And so he gets his stick on pucks. He's so incredibly good when he does not have the puck 
at making your job transitioning the puck up the ice incredibly hard, which is a great asset to have when you are a centerman. Uh, on the other side of thing, the one thing that he does struggle with quite a bit is um, protecting the puck. And so when he has the puck as a puck carrier and guys close in on space on him, it works really well through the neutral zone because because he's such an agile skater and he's able to, to um, separate from you basically on your speed and his gaps, um, when he's moving through the neutral zone, he can find that space to be able to, um, I guess, to create and, and, and find that enough space to be able to continue the possession forward. But against bigger, stronger, faster guys that are able to close out space on him, he he passes pucks pretty quickly because he doesn't want to give them away. Um, he's five foot nine. He doesn't have the longest skating stride. And so when guys really put pressure on him, um, he'll pass the puck, which is not the worst thing in the world because he's such a great team player and he's such an aware passer. He's generally making strong possession style carries. But for me as a centerman at the next level, unless I have somebody who really has tremendous handles and that confidence to be able to to continue to be that positive possession through the neutral zone and is a carry into the offensive zone. I'm not, I have a little bit of doubts with him. So I think he could, but I think he's probably better suited as a winger at the NHL level. So we, we compared uh, Connor Geeky to Kevin Stenland a little bit, to Cole Sillinger a little bit, to Patrick Lyon a little bit. Is there a comparable for Savoy on the Blue Jackets? If not, is there kind of a wider NHL comparable for his kind of game? Uh, well, so as I kind of talk about him, um, his really, like his really only biggest deficiency is that he does cough off the puck when guys close, um, ice on him. So when you, if you close space on him in the neutral zone or you close space on him in, um, the offensive zone, he, he's not, he's not terrific at being able to protect the puck, um, to move the puck and be able to to drag from his, the length of his reach. Like the way that uh, Connor Geeky um, tries to do that through the zone and through the neutral zone is by the fact he's got such a long reach. And so if you have him over here and he kind of protects his puck at his wing, he can drag at the full length of his reach with control. And so it's harder to kind of take away from him and he's able to open up passing lanes for himself. Um, Matt isn't, he doesn't have that natural ability. And so he, he, what he wants to do is he wants to pass the puck to positive space before that space gets closed. Um, it means that he doesn't necessarily the greatest possession player when time and space get taken away. And that's essentially the NHL. It's bigger, it's faster, it's physical. Um, his whole game is playing at speed and pace. Um, I think somebody that people can kind of see as, as someone that I think can play in a role that's very, very similar is I would say maybe a Lucas Raymond, um, they're they're different players in different kind of areas but the one thing that lucas accelerate uh, like that he um excels at is the fact that he's very smart um he puts himself in great position off puck to both receive passes and give so he's a tremendous team style player um and then he doesn't have when he doesn't have to do the entire dirty work he can slip into backdoor lanes get off quick shots um, he's just very smart in moving in and out of space. And I think Savoy, if he kind of finds a role with players uh, like that at the NHL level, I think Savoy could really, could do well from that. I think, you know, Raymond's a bit bigger of a player. He's got a little bit better of a shot for me. Um, but Savoy is maybe just a touch quicker. And so that's kind of a decent comparable me as far as output. They're not the same players. Comparables are always different. But I think if I think if you can get, someone like that who plays a second line right wing for you in, in Matt Savoy, I think that that's a tremendous, tremendous asset moving forward because of how smart he is and how well he uses um, just space. But you need some guys that are way more possession, some guys that are bigger, some stronger, faster, the guys that he can play off of. But everything he does is quick. He's one of those guys that, you know, a puck can come on his stick, off his stick very quickly. He can he can find his reads beforehand. He can sneak in a new back door, and when you find it with a pass, boom, boom, he can shoot very quickly too. So um, everything that he does is speed and at pace with control. Yeah, I mean, I would not be mad about having Lucas Raymond on my team. I don't think there are many many teams out there that, that would be um it sounds like he and geeky are pretty good for each other you know it sound i don't know i'm not sure if they they play on the the same line much but uh, it they, sounds they like have that. they have as a more recent yeah yeah 
it sounds like they they do a really good job of kind of uh covering for each other's shortcomings let's say well, so uh it could be well, especially in transition i think you know for people who don't watch the the winnipeg ice all the time so there's a player connor mclennan who was drafted i think in the fourth round by philadelphia um very very smart player um not this not the fastest player in the world but very very smart uh, has enough speed to his game enough grit um, but not the biggest player in the world. So they they kind of went out and they they got Jack Finley in a trade who was a second round draft pick by by Tampa Bay. And so Jack Finley is a six foot six centerman. And so for a while there was a sense of it was um, McLennan and and uh, Matt and then Jack Finley in the middle. And then the second line was Mikey Milne, who was a great plus one overager, and then Geeky in the middle, and then Zach Benson, who is a sixteen year old, who's one of the best sixteen year olds in the WHL. And so the wingers on both those lines are incredibly skilled. And then when there were injuries or different things were subbing up, they all, Winnipeg also has a guy named Skylar Bruce and Chase Berthelet and some other guys that are very quick as well. So they're the one of the most agile teams in the league. And so when you have that strong possession style play moving up the ice, that you're able to move up the ice with purpose, um, especially at the WHL level where if you have speed and puck control, you can get opportunities. And so everything that he, that, um, Savoy was doing off the rush and, and, you know, a lot of his highlights and stuff in the USH, USHL last year was breakaways, was two on ones, time where he has speed and pace to be able to create, he excels there. Um, so it's not going to be as easy for him to do those sorts of things at the NHL level. Like, I think there's some of the stuff that he's doing and some of the opportunities that he gets at the WHL level here that isn't going to be as easy for him at the NHL level. So I do have a little bit of caution on him. But if you're not wanting him to be the be all end of your line, he's an extremely fantastic complement player because of how smart he is, because how efficiently he moves the puck, and because of his two way battling. Like that, he's a very good defensive player through the neutral zone too. Looking at the uh, the rankings, obviously we talked a little bit. You don't necessarily have a a board with your own rankings on, but it looks mm-hmm. like people have him ranked anywhere from second overall all the way up to eighth which is actually a really small a really small that might be the smallest collective margin i've seen on a player since we looked at shane wright who is kind of obviously consensus number one uh is that kind of does that feel right to you kind of somewhere in that two to eight range for um savoy do you expect him to drop a little bit or rise a little bit maybe um i'm to be honest i'm not sure um I have been, I think ever since the start of the year, I've been lower on Savoy than most because I've seen that maybe I've just, I don't know, maybe I just watch him more than other people like that. They've seen him two or three times and I've watched him 15. Like, I think there's just a sense of like, I know the player a bit more. Um, I was, I was around where like, I think there was a, there was a bit in me that thought in a normal draft year in one where like, I think there's a ton of high, high ranking prospects. I think with Savoy, if I could get him, I, I don't think that I would consider him before like 12, 13, 14, to be honest with you. Um, I think that there's just some ways that he's gathering points at this level that aren't going to be as easy for him as in the next level. I think he's a fan. I think he's going to be a good NHL player. I just don't know the, on the height of it. And, and I think the fact that he's 5'9", and I don't think he's going to get any bigger with his reach, um, his skating is already tremendous. I don't think he's going to improve there. His shot is getting a little bit better, and he's he's able to kind of use that a bit better. But I think right now of what he is, I think it's pretty similar to what you're going to see at the NHL level. So I think there's some guys maybe in other leagues that have a bit more growth to them that might go ahead. It's hard to predict. I think I've kind of like come to the conclusion I think he's going to go top 10. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he dropped a bit. Like I just saw another ranking the other day. I think Sportsnet's new ranking has him third. Um, I've just never saw that. I, I think, you know, I, I think I wouldn't be surprised if he falls in that eight to 10 range, but I could be way off to be honest. Like once again, with not knowing these intimately, there's some players that, you know, I, to be honest, I think when I've looked at the players from this draft, um, there isn't a group of like a, you know, a top 11 or a top whatever in my mind that I think are like the elite something, something, something um, like, you know, I guess I compare it to to last year's draft in that, like, you know, some of the guys that went in the seven, eight, nine, ten range, like, I, I would have Savoy behind Eklund. I would have him behind um, 
Dylan Gunther, I think like he might be similar to Dylan Gunther ish. I might have Dylan a little bit ahead. So in a draft like that. So I think, you know, I, I think it wouldn't, it would make sense for me to see Savoy go in the, the eight to 10 range if it would surprise a few people, but he, he'll probably go fifth or something like that. Yeah, it feels like a, a really weird draft kind of, and this is something I talked about with um, Tony Ferrari a little bit, was this is the draft class that has been most impacted by COVID. And mm-hmm. so this is kind of, you're seeing, I think a lot of people thought this was going to be a really strong draft. And I think it only looks as strong as it does in the wake of last year's draft, which is obviously pretty weak. And I think when you look at next year's draft, you know, there's maybe seven or eight players that look as if they could go in the first three, yeah. you know? So it's, 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 it's a really weird draft to look at and be like, Oh, well in a vacuum, obviously this kid is incredible. But when you look at kind of the, 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 the pool as a whole compared to last year and compared to next year, it does kind of, I think this is a, this is such a weird, a weird draft. Um, I want to talk about the the kind of the WHL in a little bit kind of a wider detail because obviously that's the the league that you you cover and that you know the best. And I always feel like the WHL gets um, is a little bit underrated by mm-hmm. a lot of people. I feel like the OHL gets all the flash, and then I look at a player and I'm like, oh, he played in the WHL, and you know they've got a ton of really great teams in the WHL that just never seem to get the attention that the ohl teams do is that like would you would you agree with that do you think that's a fair kind of assessment of the the chl as a whole well i think i think the whl is probably the most physical of all of the leagues in north america and so one of the things that you get to learn as a prospect is how to deal with slash counter physicality and so you'll see a lot of players like that are i think maybe a little bit down the lines maybe they're fourth fifth you know, round guys that they learn early, you know, they don't have to wait until pro hockey to be able to be like, Oh guys, close out space on you and always want the inside position on you and um, make sure that they're boxing you at a space and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's something that you can learn um, at, in the WHO more than, you know, some of the other, some of the other leagues. And there's some guys that, like I said, even if they're not strong um, players like that, they can learn it a bit more at this, at, in this kind of league and so it's something that i really like about the whl because because it's a little bit more physical because it's a bit more in your face um guys have to learn how to counter that and that's more similar to the pro game than other guys so it does have a little bit of an advantage there um i think you see some some defensemen i think come through the ranks um you know i I think blue jackets have gotten a little glimpse at um, jake christensen as uh, as of recently as a guy who was you know an undrafted player who um, was just a little bit behind on opportunity. He was like second, third on a team um, for on a good team for a good number of while um, playing very similar minutes to a Wyatt Wiley who went in the fifth round. And then Christensen got the ability to thrive on a top power play and just kind of never looked back. Um, as a person who used to, to uh, write for for the, the Stockton Heat as well as the Calgary Flames stuff. Um, I really like Christensen. He came to one of the camps there and I thought they were going to sign him and they ended up not doing that. And I think it, you know, I think it's a mistake um, on their evaluation part, but because I think he's a guy that once again, learned how to play physical, learned how to play with speed, learned how to use his reach and uh, and thrive at the WHL level. And a lot of those skills are transferable to to the pro game. Yeah, we uh, we love Jake Christensen here in here, or I do anyway. Uh, we I like all of the we're collecting Jakes. Uh, I've decided we have we have three Jakes at the minute, so uh, it's uh, it's extremely funny. I've been calling them Big, Medium, and Little Jake, but yeah, Jake Christensen just scored his first NHL goal a little while ago, so you know, I'm I'm pretty high on uh, on Christensen, and he's doing really great things in the in the AHL with uh, with Cleveland at the minute. So uh, if people want to know more about the WHL at large or about the prospect work that you do uh, where can people find you and your work yeah for sure uh so i work for puck preps and so puck preps is a website that uh, covers anywhere from 14 year old hockey players to uh to 18 19 and kind of those age ranges it, it gets uh, ranked by their birth year so it's a little bit different than the nhl draft in that sense that um you know if you're looking for the the top guys that are born as in the 2005 they will all be kind of ranked together on a ranking and so if they're a late birthday uh, for example, like Owen Power last year was a 2002. 
And so he was a late birthday, even though it was an NHL draft of a 2003 because he was born kind of later on. So there's some players like that. Connor Zary was in that for Calgary as well. Uh, so if you want to know more about those players and the profiles and guys that are eligible for draft years as well, we've got those guys ranked by their birth year. So you can kind of come in and see their, their uh, profile as far as like some of the games that they've covered and then rankings that we have of them. If you want any more specific coverage, I also do work for FC Hockey. Uh, where there's a number of um, writers across, you know, Europe and, and North America that uh, are covering prospects for specifically for ranking for the NHL draft. And so you can go on there and uh, and find individual profiles that they've done. And so for me, for covering the WHL, you can find profiles that I've submitted on on uh, Matt Savoy and, uh, and Connor Geeky and uh, anyone as well from the WHL. Awesome. Well, I will for sure be checking those out because, as I keep saying, I know nothing about prospect and I want to know more. So uh, <laughs> thank you for coming to talk to me about the Winnipeg Ice guys. Uh, obviously, we did kind of geeky. We've done that. So I, uh, I don't think there are anyone. Is there, is there anyone else on Winnipeg Ice that uh, is slated to go in the kind of top 15? But maybe we'll... Uh, no, no, not the top 15. <laughs> it's those guys. But uh, I think um, they do have Mikey Milne, who I think is a, is a redraft this year. Um, he's a really strong player that uh, I think most likely i think he'll get drafted this year he has a lot of similar he has a lot of similar positive traits to um to uh to matt as well um he's not as quick as him and explosive but he's just as smart just as great in puck control and stuff so i think um you know i think there's there's uh, going to be a team that'll that'll get a guy who could really like you know push through the fold and become a top line ahl player for sure in my opinion but you know if he if he rises above that it's a uh, Really, really awesome. But yeah, Savoy is just, uh, um, he's a player that uh, he's a bit smaller. He, and at the NHL level, you have to find ways to get over your size. And some guys do it with puck protection. Some guys use it with speed. Some guys do it with quick shots. You know, I think there's a lot of guys that found their space in the NHL. You know, uh, um, you know, there's the, a Jesper Bratt. There's a Niels, Niels Hoglander. There's Connor Garland. There's a number of players that just don't necessarily have the size, but they do it with speed. And uh, they do it with quick puck movement and smart play. And I think that's that's where uh, Matt will find his success. Yeah. I mean, Columbus has had some success with short players in the past. Obviously, Cam Atkinson was uh, a mainstay yes. for us for many, many years. And he is, uh, I believe, officially he's lifted, listed as 5'8", but he is like, he is 5'6" at the absolute most we've <laughs> my friend who is five six stood next to him and was the same height so we uh, we have proof that he's not five eight but uh yeah thanks for thanks for coming to talk about prospects make sure you guys all uh follow joel on social media check out his prospect stuff i've been jay foster you can find me on twitter at underscore jacob foster j-a-k-o-b-f-o-r-s-t-e-r if you're watching on youtube it's at the bottom of the screen so it's easier for you to spell because my name is a nightmare and uh Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Locks on Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms. We are on YouTube now. You can find us on Twitter over at LO underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. I am sure that we will have Joel back at uh, a later point in the season when I have more questions about WHL prospects. But uh, until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.